Hi guys, it's Geekonomics here, and this is a revision video for those of you studying GCSE Economics. So those of you in year 11 who will be doing paper A591, how the market works in June of this year. So ladies and gentlemen, you may or may not know, uh, certainly for the A-level this is the case, that what has been assessed on the previous three uh, sessions for this paper does not tend to be repeated in the fourth session. And therefore we can look at the previous three sessions, as I'm going to talk you through here in a moment, look at what was assessed and then consider what is most likely to be assessed in the June 2016 session. So, June 2013, these are the areas, if you look at the exam paper, these are the areas which were assessed. Sectors of the economy, the type of economy, factors of production, price elasticity of supply. We had a labour market diagram. We had an eight mark question saying should skilled workers be paid more than unskilled? We had a little bit of a question on market structures, so by that we mean competitive markets. Calculate average cost. Now remember ladies and gentlemen, note well, bring a calculator to the exam. We had a section on business objectives, economies of scale. We had another eight mark question, and you'll see a little bit of a pattern here, eight marks, eight marks, eight marks, three questions. So we had another eight mark question, to what extent will people benefit from an increase in the number of supermarkets? Then finally, we had a minimum price diagram, we had a price elasticity of demand and the interpretation of that including the implications on a firm's total revenue, so you need to know how that's uh, illustrated using a demand and supply diagram. Determinants of supply, and then the final eight mark question, discuss the pros and cons arising from specialisation. Now as we go through here, you'll see that this topic of specialisation appears over and over and over again. And hopefully at the end of this, I'll be able to show you why that's the case. June 2014, areas of assessment. Three questions again, three eight markers, one, two, and three. Look, final question here, specialization once again. So, started with production and productivity, knowing the difference between the two. Uh, you're asked to calculate total costs, so you need to know the total cost equation. Total fixed costs plus total variable costs. Identifying methods used to improve productivity, and then the discussed part of this uh, question was discuss the costs and benefits of a firm's growth for eight marks. So that was all question one on this paper. Question two, supply and demand. So supply definition, determinants of supply and then price elasticity of demand. And then the essay focused on the determinants of demand. Now it's quite difficult to see that on the specification at first glance but uh, later we'll be able to point out where that comes in. And then the third question was all about the basic economic problem, business objectives, the advantages and disadvantages associated with operating in a competitive market, and then as I've already said, this whole issue of specialisation rears its head once again. And then in June 2015, now you'll find this tricky to get the exam paper on the OCR website or the mark scheme because it's not there, so I'll put a little link down below down below here uh, and you can pick up the mark scheme and the paper. Again three questions, three eight markers but again look look here ladies and gentlemen specialization again an eight mark question so in the last three sessions there's been an, an essay an extended answer question on specialization a real pattern here emerging ladies and gentlemen. So factors of production, scarcity and choice, the impact of increased competition Discuss the extent to which a firm can benefit from increasing economies of scale. That was question one. Question two. Demand, supply, total revenue. Discuss the costs and benefits arising from specialisation. I mean, obviously, all you need to do is look at the mark schemes for these specialisation um, questions and really just learn the, the, the advantages and disadvantages which are uh, being printed on the mark schemes. And then the final one. Tertiary sector, profit calculation, so total revenue minus total costs, price elasticity of demand, 
discuss the advantages and disadvantages of the national minimum wage. And that was it. So those are the previous three sessions. Now, the specification, let me just bring that up. Here it is. So this is the specification for A591. And it's in three parts. So you've got 2.1.1, what is the economic problem? Move that up, ladies and gentlemen, manually. Then you've got 2.2.2 here. How does the UK government raise and spend its money? And then you've got 2.2. Hang on, I think we're on the wrong, we're on the wrong thing here, actually, ladies and gents. Let's just go back here. What's the economic problem? There. So 2.1.2 is what are competitive markets, and then scrolling down to the next section, 2.1.3, how do firms operate in competitive markets? So those are the three areas that can potentially be assessed for A591, and obviously you need to know everything which is on the right hand side here, candidates should be able to. So just looking back at uh, what has been assessed in terms of the extended answer questions, you can see that specialisation has been assessed three times. Now if you look at this specification, i.e. section 2.1.1, which is what I've just shown you, this really is the only, the only potential question from this section. Certainly the only potential extended answer question from this section. And hence, it's more than likely to appear again. Growth has appeared twice, and again, the choice for an extended answer question is limited from section 2.1.3, so the third section on A591. Labour markets have appeared twice, and again, choice is limited on 2.1.3. Determinants of demand has appeared once, and, it's, and at first glance it's a little bit difficult to see where that fits, but it does fit. And then the whole notion of competition has appeared once as well. Right, so what should you be focusing your revision on for June? I think the, the, the following areas. This is by no means a catch-all thing, so I'm not saying just revise this and nothing else, but I think these are certainly things worthy of a little bit more of your time. In section 1, 2.1.1, what is the economic problem? So identify and explain the key features of market and mixed economies. Make sure that you can do that. Identify and explain the key differences between public and private enterprises. That hasn't been on at all, really. Appreciate, yes, money. So money as a means of deferred payment, store of value, unit of account, medium of exchange. And that's just simple sort of definitions, really. Explain and evaluate the costs and benefits of individuals or firms specialising. And again, that's an eight mark question bound to come up probably because it's the only area of section one that can be used for an extended answer question. What about section two, competitive markets? I think you should focus on monopoly. Explain the meaning of monopoly and monopoly power. Describe and evaluate the causes and consequences of monopoly power. That's a potentially at mark question. Explain and evaluate the role of the government in promoting competition, a potentially at mark question. Understand the implications of price elasticity of supply on businesses. Assess the effects of taxes and subsidies on price and quantity in competitive markets. Now that whole notion of diagrams and so on to use alongside that, that has not appeared at all really of late. And then finally, explain and assess the effects of maximum and minimum prices. I think we saw previously we had a minimum price uh, question but not maximum price, so uh, worthy of your consideration. And then finally, in the third section, how do firms operate in competitive markets? Perhaps you should focus on these areas. E evaluate the benefits and limitations of the product market for eight marks. 
explain internal, but I think more specifically, you should maybe take a close look at external economies and diseconomies of scale. Discuss the costs and benefits of growth for a business for a gate marks. Identify differences between gross and net, and real and nominal income. Now, they would be low tariff uh, questions, but still worthy of your consideration. Explain and evaluate wage differentials within and between occupations for eight marks. Now, generally speaking, there, there has been in the last number of sessions uh, labour markets extended answer questions, so that's worth your consideration. And this one on the national minimum wage, that has been on before, but maybe, you know, with the living wage being introduced and so on, that's something that might appear again. So I hope that's of use. As I, you know, I reiterate, this is by no means a catch-all thing, but I would finish by saying context, context, context. Remember, in each of these questions, you're given a context, a, a little case study of a business. So make sure that in your answers, especially to the extended answer questions, you answer with regard to the context that you're given and apply all the principles that you know to the given scenario. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's it on GCSE A591 for June 2016, and I'll be back shortly, I hope, with A592.